Good morning, high school students. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, school is continuing to go very well, and we're proud of all the work that you have done so far. Uh, your teachers have said that everything is, is running smoothly. I just encourage you to reach out to them directly if you have questions about how things work in their class. Uh, I think this has worked out for most of you so far. A couple of announcements before we start the week. One is that this is a reminder that this will be a short week of classes. We will have classes this week only on Monday through Wednesday. Thursday was scheduled to be Grandparents Day and so we will not have classes on that day and Friday is Good Friday. Since this was supposed to be a week to honor uh, your grandparents, we would ask all of you to take time to honor them on your own this week. Make a phone call use FaceTime, use other means to communicate with them and honor them. Additionally, we'd love for you to post a video to one of our social media sites of you with a message for your grandparents. It'd be great for us to be able to share those. If you'd like to share them also with Tracy Brothers uh, at brothers.t at nationalchristian.org, we'd love for you to share uh, a video with her uh, that she can share out from the school webpage. So please honor your grandparents and let us see how you're honoring them as well. Now it's time for uh, our next installment of the student mailbag. I'm going to reach in and find another letter here. Let's see, put those down. Okay, here is the student mailbag letter of the day. It says, Dear Mr. Bishop, I am glad to know that you are doing well. But what about Dr. Dan? Is he still working? What does he do if there are no detentions to give out? Sincerely, Carson Guthrie. Well, Carson, I'm sure you know a lot about detentions, but we'll leave that for later. But I did ask Dr. Dan to share a video of what he is doing during this distance learning time, and so you can see exactly what he's been up to. All right, everybody, let's go. First block, let's go, don't be late. Nice, good morning, looking sharp. Yes, hey, tuck in your shirt, that's a demerit. Hey, whoa, 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 you're not in dress code. I, I don't even go to school. That's a demerit for sass. After we take care of tardies and attendance issues, then we hit the books pretty hard. And honestly, we're killing it. Girls are having so much fun. Girls, who's your favorite homeschool teacher? Although I think it's probably pretty obvious how much fun and how engaged the girls are in this type of learning in this setting. Uh, I like to break up the day and we also do a portion where uh, they just pick their own books. We call it free reading time. I love free reading when we get to pick. Thanks, Dad. All right, scholars, if you're in Dr. Wilkerson's class, you're going to stay and help us clean today. Please stack your chairs, put the trash where it belongs. Now we're time for another exciting point of the day. Uh, the girls love this part, it's, uh, PE or cross country. Uh, some of you know how competitive I am. I also coach, and so uh, from the looks of what these other schools on our street are doing, uh, we're going to win the conference pretty easily. We're going to start running just for uh, probably a couple miles, uh, so have fun running up this for PE, and uh, I'll see you in a couple hours. As our day comes to a close, um, we have the same routine. We try to put on like some calm music and uh, just ease into the evening. <laughs> Carson, again, thanks for asking. Um, I can tell you this with all sincerity, I never thought I would say this. I miss seeing you and uh, hope that I can see all of you uh, really soon. Uh, take care of yourself, I'm praying for you all, uh, especially for our seniors out there. Sincerely, um, hope we can see you soon. Thank you, Carson, for that email. And I hope now you know that Dr. Dan has been very busy, uh, even though there's no students here to check dress code or you know, check for tardies or give out detentions. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Landry Smith, and he will deliver a devotional message for the day. Hello there, and happy short week of classes. Towards the end of this week, 
Uh, we would be celebrating on campus if we were there Grandparents' Day and taking the day off on Friday for Good Friday. So I hope that this week, call your grandparents, tell them you love them, tell them hello, and for Easter, uh, celebrate with people around you. I'm sure there'll be some creative ways that we celebrate this year. Um, but I want us to make sure that we took the time here, uh, as I've talked for the last couple of devotions about Easter, but to close the story here for us on this Monday. And so we think, uh, at least for me, I think about this story, it's kind of like this. So imagine a time in your life when you've been so excited for something that you can't sleep. So there's something coming up the next day and you just cannot wait to get to that moment. And I think all of us have probably had this experience the most possibly on like Christmas. So the night before Christmas, I know we've all probably had this feeling where we're lying in our beds. We're tossing and turning. We cannot wait for the next morning to get here to see what presents have come. So we're so eager to get up. I know I would just lie there and wait for my parents to wake up so we could get up and run downstairs to celebrate Christmas morning. So we see a similar kind of emotion in Luke's account of the Easter story in the Bible. So when the women that had been with Jesus there at the crucifixion and the burial, um, when they saw that he'd been buried, they couldn't wait to get back to his tomb so they could prepare his body. And so they quickly got everything ready, but they had to wait because it was the beginning of Sabbath. So they had to wait a day and a half to actually visit his tomb. So they're waiting eagerly to be able to go take care of their friend. So finally, the Bible says at early dawn on Sunday, which means it was the first chance they could get to go and see his body, they went. And they were desperate to get there because they loved Jesus dearly. Uh, there was no one, nowhere more important for them to be in that moment than honoring him and adoring their Lord and friend and to carefully take care of his body now that he had been crucified. And these people, these women were such great friends of Jesus, so of course they wanted his burial uh, to be a proper thing. They had spent time with him. They had listened to him teach. They had witnessed his miracles. Their lives had been changed by him. They loved him. They had traveled with him, following his teachings. They had watched him be killed and buried. But while these people had spent so much time with Jesus, it's like they didn't fully grasp exactly who he was still. Jesus had told them time and time again that he would rise again three days after his death. Yet they were so confused when they got to the tomb and it was empty. They thought Jesus' death was the end of the story. Then they would go to his tomb, they would see his body, and they figured that they would, they would have to take care of him and take care of his burial. They figured that even though Jesus said he would come back, there's no chance that could possibly happen. You can't blame them. I mean, I wouldn't have believed them either, probably. But the story goes like this in Luke 24, verses 1 through 9. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They had found the stone rolled away from the tomb, when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. As they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the rest." So I can't imagine this moment, how excited they must have been. So let's put ourselves in their shoes for just a second. So the angel said, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? He's not here, but he is risen. It clicked. It was just like all of a sudden the story made sense. Jesus had told them he was going to come back in three days. So all of a sudden they realized if he's going to come back and this is the third day, he's here. He's alive. Our friend is exactly who he said he was the whole time. And it's just a, a remarkable moment of just like, oh my goodness, can you believe that this has actually happened? So the story continues in verses 10 through 12. So it says, now Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles, but these words seemed to them to be an idle tale and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen claws by them, by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had just happened. So when they show up, the apostles don't believe it initially. It sounds like an idle tale is how it says in the Bible. Almost just like a foolish story someone would tell you that you would never believe. And I can't help but think that my reaction probably would have been similar. If someone shows up and says, you're telling me my friend who I saw killed, I saw him buried, he's alive again? Like, you can't be serious. But then Peter responds in a different way. And he reacted much like maybe you or I would on Christmas morning. We run downstairs to see what had been waiting for us. So with this eagerness, Peter jumps up and runs to the tomb. 
And upon seeing that Jesus' body is gone, he is amazed and overjoyed. And the Bible says he marveled at what had happened. So for each of this year, I challenge all of us to act like Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, at this part in the story. People have seen the power of the empty tomb, the way we've seen it change our own lives, and we can't wait to share that news with somebody else. Now, some of us may be experiencing this news for the first time, and we may have heard this story a million times. We're hearing it again in a different way. But I hope that we respond like Peter would, no matter how many times we've heard this, that we run and jump, and we can't wait to see what it is that God had made happen, that his power is on full display, and that Jesus is alive, and that's the reason why we get to celebrate Easter. The tomb is empty, and because of that, you and I have life forever. Pray with me. Uh, dear God, I just pray for the people watching this video, uh, for myself, for anybody out there, that when we hear the good news of your name, that we do just like the people in the story did, and we run and tell people immediately. And God, when we hear the news, may we not dismiss it, but may, may we see the amazing power it has in our lives. May we run up and jump and see what you've done and share the news with that to everybody. God, you're a good God, and we thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son to die for our sins, to conquer death, to rise again, and let us live with you forever. In your name, amen. There'll be no joke of the day this week out of just respect for this message. Not that all Bible messages are not important, but I just felt like we should let the message be by itself this week. But we'll be back at it again next week, I promise. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Miss you guys. Love you. Take care.